In this video, we're going to discuss the synthesis of disubstituted and polysubstituted benzenes using EAS reactions, as well as some important general limitations of electrophilic aromatic substitution, primarily having to do with the fact that this reaction generates a very, very strong electrophile. If there are any even halfway decent nucleophiles in the substrate, we're going to run into problems. I want to start, though, with an example of designing the synthesis of a disubstituted benzene. This is a great context to begin exploring complex, multi-step synthesis, where we've got multiple roots, synthetic roots, that we're going to want to consider, and there is one that's going to rise above all the others as the optimal approach that's going to lead to the product we want with the right connectivity, with the right substitution pattern, substituents in the right position, and with the right structures. So let's imagine we wanted to synthesize 3-chloroaniline, which has an NH2 substituent and a Cl substituent in a meta-relationship linked to a benzene ring. Well, first, let me talk a little bit about how we want to think about this. We actually want to start with the end in mind. We want to start with the final product or the final target first and work backwards one reverse reaction at a time or one retro reaction, we might say, back to simple starting materials. And we know in this problem, and this is common in introductory organic chemistry, we know where we want to end up. We want to go all the way back to benzene. And this is typical in aromatic synthesis problems, that we want to start with benzene, the cheapest, the most abundant aromatic compound. And so in thinking backwards from the target, we're going to think not in terms of forward reactions, we'll think about that a little bit, but initially we're going to think about often disconnecting bonds or simplifying the target back to simpler starting materials, saying things like, okay, 3-chloroaniline can be made from a simpler starting material. And this arrow with two lines right here is used to represent the words can be made from. So when you, whenever you see this arrow, I encourage you to say out loud or think in your head the words can be made from. And to see how this works, let's start right away with 3-chloroaniline. We might think to ourselves, okay, I know how to install a chlorine substituent on a benzene ring in a single step through a halogenation reaction. And so, in theory anyway, I could make 3-chloroaniline from aniline itself we could entertain this idea. And so you can read this figure here as 3-chloroaniline can be made from aniline. Now, before moving forward, we do want to entertain the forward reaction and make sure it would work as advertised, as I like to say. Will it give the product that we're expecting it to give in an acceptable yield, let's say? Well, let's consider the forward reaction. This would involve treating aniline with Cl2 and AlCl3. Notice that we're expecting this reaction to install the chlorine meta to the NH2 group. So we're expecting the NH2 group to act as a meta director. It's not, right? It's an ortho para director because this is a resonance electron donating group. Notwithstanding that, this reaction wouldn't work for other reasons. We've got an extremely great Lewis acid in AlCO3 together with a fantastic Lewis base in the amino nitrogen. Those will get together and this will shut down the reaction since the Lewis acid catalyst is actually not even there at all, right? It's part of a Lewis acid-based adduct with the aniline nitrogen. And so this is bad for two reasons. Uh, even if the EAS reaction did work, we wouldn't get the right regioselectivity. We'd get ortho and para isomers. And the reaction wouldn't work at all uh, anyway because of the Lewis acid base side reaction that would dominate under these circumstances. So we need another approach. And the fact that the NH2 group is problematic suggests that we need to think about functional group interchange as that key last step. And our first step in thinking backwards needs to be getting rid of that NH2 group, converting it to something that is acceptable to be around under electrophilic aromatic substitution conditions. And the nitro group comes to mind, right? We know how to convert a nitro group into an NH2 group through a reduction reaction. That's one of the functional group interchange reactions we've discussed. So that works us backwards to this. And now we could actually go one of two ways. We could imagine nitrating chlorobenzene, so starting with this and adding the nitro group, or we could imagine starting with nitrobenzene and chlorinating it, adding on the chlorine group. That second approach 
is the better approach. And it, this is a good moment to pause and make sure you understand why. If need be, consider the nitration of chlorobenzene and convince yourself why this will not work to give this product. We'll get other isomers than the meta-substituted chlorobenzene. All right, so the right approach is to chlorinate nitrobenzene. The NO2 group is a meta-director and will direct the chlorine to the meta position. Finally, we know how to install the nitro group through an EAS reaction, right? And so we can work this nitrobenzene back to benzene. Awesome. We're done with what's called the retrosynthesis. This is working backwards from the target to our starting material, thinking in terms of reactions in reverse. You'll sometimes hear me use the word transform to refer to a reaction in reverse. This is a, a reaction literally applied in the reverse direction, backwards in time, thinking from the product to the starting material. That's what we call a transform. So we can talk about the nitration transform, for example, the aromatic nitration transform, which is represented by this figure with nitrobenzene uh, can be made from aero and benzene as the starting material. Okay, now what we need to do is draw the synthetic scheme. And this is ultimately what the answer is going to be in a lot of synthesis problems, multi-step synthesis problems. Now we're going to start at the beginning with benzene, the starting material, and we're going to add the reaction conditions that lead to the next step in our retrosynthesis, which is nitrobenzene in this case. So aromatic nitration is accomplished with HNO3 and H2SO4. This gives nitrobenzene, just a monosubstituted benzene, no regiochemical issue. Next up, we're going to chlorinate that. That's the next stage in our ret retrosynthesis. And we do that with Cl2 and a Lewis acid, such as AlCl3. The NO2 group is meta-directing, so this reaction will work as advertised, it'll be a bit slow because nitrobenzene is deactivated, right? The ring is very electron poor. It's not a great nucleophile, but we can get it to go. And uh, the, the major product will be the meta substituted product with chlorine in the meta position with respect to the nitro group. Next, we need to convert that nitro group into an NH2. And this is actually going to finish off the synthesis. And this is done through a reduction process, for example, 10 metal and HCl. This actually gives the ammonium. Um, or the anilinium with the nitrogen protonated NH3 plus connected to the aromatic bit. And so to get back the neutral amine, we treat with sodium hydroxide. That's why the second sodium hydroxide step is here. And that's important to include because what we want to isolate, what we want to get out of this is the neutral aniline, not the anilinium salt, which is going to be very difficult to separate, for example, from the 10 salts and any residual HCl left behind in the reaction mixture. This slide points out some important general limitations of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions and offers a solution, at least for one of them, a very specific solution. The first general problem is that anilines, which contain an amino group, NH2, or other alkyl amino group linked to a benzene ring, are incompatible with the strongly Lewis acidic and Bronsted acidic conditions associated with most EAS reactions. The problem is, the amino nitrogen is a pretty good nucleophile, pretty good Lewis base. And so what we end up with is either Lewis acid base or Bronsted acid base reactivity at the amino nitrogen instead of any sort of nucleophilic reactivity of the aromatic ring itself. For example, if you hit aniline with HNO3 and H2SO4 and expect to get nitration out of this, you're going to be very disappointed. You'll end up simply with the anilinium nitrate salt right, or the anilinium sulfate salt, which may well just crash out of solution as an insoluble salt, right? So anilines are incompatible with these strongly Lewis acidic and Bronsted acidic conditions that we've seen for EAS reactions. And there you go, you get this anilinium salt instead of uh, the desired nitration product. There is a way to get around this, however, and it involves moderating the Lewis and Bronsted basicity of that amino nitrogen essentially by delocalizing its lone pair into a carbonyl group or other electron withdrawn group. The carbonyl group is far and away the most convenient for doing this, and we can convert the NH2 group into an amide functional group by treating the aniline with acetic anhydride, which is often abbreviated AC2O, and pyridine, which is there to act as a base and is often abbreviated as PY or PYR. So here's an example of this. If we start with aniline itself, 
and we treat it with acetic anhydride and pyridine, the product contains a carbonyl group linked to the amino nitrogen. And we've actually created an amide functional group. Now, this is still an ortho para director, and that's worth pointing out that this doesn't change the directing effect of the nitrogen, which is nice and very important. What it does do is make that nitrogen way, way, way less basic than it was. And in fact, the amide group as a whole is way less basic than even an aniline. And so we don't need to worry as much about protonation of the nitrogen or the amide oxygen under, for example, nitration conditions. And we can get synthetically useful yields of, for example, the para nitro product here with the nitro group installed para to this electron donating, because the nitrogen is directly connected to the aromatic ring, electron donating amide group with the uh, in acetyl group here directing um, to the para position. Now, this wouldn't be super useful if we couldn't remove the amide after installing the nitro group. And this can be done using what are called hydrolysis conditions with strong acid and water. It can also be done with strong base, but strong acid and water is really all you need to know about this for the time being. And that's done using H3O plus H2O and heat. We'll talk about this when we talk about nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions, acylations of nucleophiles later in the course. And of course, if you wanted the ortho nitro product instead of the para nitro product, you could absolutely get that through the same means. The ortho product would also be formed in a synthetically useful yield. The second bullet point here pertains to friedel crafts reactions. They require an activated aromatic substrate or only weakly deactivated, so halobenzenes, as the starting material. Strongly deactivated benzenes, which are very, very weak nucleophiles, actually don't engage with the carbocations that are generated under friedel crafts conditions or acylium ions in the case of an um, acylation process. And even these primary complexes between the alkyl halide and AlCl3 don't react with these very electron deficient rings. So even a carbonyl is enough to shut down Friedel Crafts reactivity with acetophenone, which is this substrate, undergoing no reaction with methyl chloride and AlCl3. We would expect this to methylate, for example, meta to the acyl group. This doesn't happen. No reaction takes place at all. Acetophenone just sits there. Likewise, nitrobenzene, that's way too electron deficient to engage with the complex between methyl chloride and AlCl3. So here again, no reaction is observed because the reaction is just prohibitively slow with this very weak nucleophile nitrobenzene. 